Fabulous. You know, it's taken so many years for me to get to FedCon. Um, I've done a lot of conventions and uh, FedCon's one of the, the few that I haven't done because I actually, uh, I took, last year I took off completely. I didn't do any convention. I think I did one convention. I was just so tired. Um, the year before that I did 11 conventions. So it was just crazy flying around. Um, so it's nice. It's great to get back to Germany. You know, I've only done one convention before in Nuremberg. My first convention for Stargate was in Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is my second trip back. It's fantastic. Yeah. We heard you were a little jet lagged yesterday. I was very jet lagged. Yeah. It's. I just suffer a lot with that. You know, coming this way, I suffer a lot. Going back, it's fine. But yeah, I, I arrived. I. I mean, I got some sleep on the plane, and then uh, uh, Thursday nights I went to sleep at like one thirty, and I woke up at three a.m. and that was it. I was awake, so I stayed awake. 5 a.m. I went for a walk outside, and yeah, it just hits you. And I know David Hewlett arrived yesterday. And when we were, we were on stage together, he was like, ugh, because he only got four hours sleep. But we get used to, we travel around, you know, but you need one day. Like, today is great. <laughs> um, so we would really like to ask you a couple of, uh, mm -hmm. couple of questions uh, about the new show that's uh, on the air, Stargate Universe, that actually just uh, recently started here in um, Germany. So do you like the new series? Um, do you think it's going to be as uh, um, successful as your series was? Well, I hope it is successful. You know, it takes a long time for, for the fans to get to know the characters and to, to uh, feel close to the characters. Um, I only saw the, the premiere episode. I haven't been watching it at all. Uh, the first one was, you know, it's kind of like all shows. They, all the actors have to get to know each other and start gelling together. Um, I hope it works well, you know. I mean, personally for myself, I didn't think it was it was that fantastic in the beginning but it's a whole new thing because it's now it's all young guys uh, what they missed in the as far as I'm concerned in the beginning is there was just no bad guys there's no villain you know and that's what makes a show it gives it a like a texture you know y your good guy is only as good as the bad guy is bad and actually the the villain has to be very very bad he has to be his story has to be a lot stronger than the good guy because then he makes the good guy look very good. That's what was missing in the show. I'm sure it'll come. Um, I don't know up to now. You know, I haven't been watching it. So, I mean, I wish them luck and I hope it does get popular. But uh, I don't think anything will be as good as Stargate SG-1, personally. <laughs> you know why? Because actually, you know, Richard Dean and Anderson, he made the show. It was him. And Richard is he's such a great guy. He brings a sense of humor to it. And it, everything was like done tongue-in-cheek, tongue cheek. you know. And... I think that's what made the show, and maybe that's what SGU needs to find. They need to find that that guy. Would you consider to uh, guest star in the uh, Stargate Universe? Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. If it's a, a meaty enough role, if it's bad enough for me, I don't think I'd go into the show as a good guy. I would definitely like to be the villain. I'd like to stay Ball. You know, I think Ball is uh, such a fantastic character. Yeah. Do you miss working uh, for uh, the Stargate series, and what do you miss most? I, yeah, I really miss working on the show. It was a lot of fun. I love traveling up to Vancouver from, you know, I live in Los Angeles and uh, just going up to Vancouver to film was always a nice break for me. And I miss the, the camaraderie they had on the set and I loved playing the character and yeah, the writing was great. And you know, the writers, they were so good. They started writing for me. You know, I played my character with a bit of sense of humor and they never told me how to play my character. And I really miss that. They gave me a lot of freedom because Really, generally, you don't have a lot of freedom as an actor when you're working. You kind of get told what to do the whole time. Um, that show from day one, they never told me how to play my play ball. I just brought myself into him, and that was great. And then they started writing it for me. And uh, so, uh, are the fans' reactions different because you were the one, or do they still love you? No, they love me. Yeah, <laughs> they love the bad guy. You know, I, I've always kind of said it's like, What's nice about playing the villain is you get to play because we can't do it in real life every day and I've always said to like like I say to the fans listen if if there were no police on the road and you were at a parking meter you wouldn't put money in the meter and they're like no well, I say that's what I do on set that's fun if I want to kill someone I kill someone there's no law it's fantastic but it's only play you know that's why I have fun with it
So there are rumors that uh, Roland Emmerich is planning uh, to direct an Anastasia movie. Do you know anything about it? Uh, what do you think about it? And would you like to be part of it? Most definitely, I would like to be part of it. Um, I know they have a few movies in the pipeline waiting to come out. Um, just depends when they do them. But without a doubt, I would love to work with them any time, yeah. Can you tell us uh, your most memorable moment on the set? Um, you know what, the whole show was fantastic. I mean, I loved shooting. Continuum was, was really nice to do because that for me was the highlight of the show because it was so big. Everything about it was big because we were shooting a film. The sets were... There was more money in it. It was just bigger. Um, you know, I'd say, you know, Continuum was the highlight for me on the show. Um, besides that, the costumes I wore were fantastic. Can you tell us uh, something about your present or future projects? Um, are you still interested in doing science fiction fantasy in this recently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. We have a project now which we're hoping we can get into development, but as you know, it's, it's extremely difficult to get stuff made uh, these days. Um, I have a show called Dust, which I have two partners on. They're the creators. Um, I'm now a producer on the show. It's a sci-fi western. Uh, number one, we're trying to bring westerns to the younger generation, get younger people to start watching westerns, because westerns are making a comeback. But they have to come back with a change. They can't be as, as, as rigid as they used to be. There's just a good guy and a bad guy, and they kill each other. This is now a drama. It's about characters. Uh, the sci-fi twist is it's steampunk fashion which is also making a big comeback. There's a very big market for steampunk. Um, my character is the lead character, and we have already 13 episodes written. We have the trailer, which I'm going to be showing here in the panel. Uh, it's been in the works for two years. We've been working on this. So that's the first thing, which is a huge sci-fi based um, project, which we're doing because of the big sci-fi fan base that I have. And I know the 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 people that have been watching Stargates and all this kind of stuff will watch the show and they're going to love it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and uh, there's another show I'm working on, I've been working on for over a year already. I acquired the life rights to a black athlete. He's still alive, he lives in New York. Uh, he was the first African American to swim the English Channel. He swam Manhattan Island, he swam around Alcatraz Island, but he only swims in Butterfly. Uh, it's a very dramatic story. He, he ended up in prison, he was conspired against and uh, he went to he went to jail. They they try to make him out that he was a drug lord in New York City. Uh, he's 55 years old now. He's a fantastic guy. I know him very well, and I'm writing his life story. And that's also very close to to getting into development. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can get that going. And then the other project I'm working on, which is kind of a sideline, is uh, we're trying to put together a documentary for the Moulin Rouge in Paris. Um, it's a very interesting place. I work there, so I'm going to narrate the show. We're going to interview ex-dancers and just go through the history of the Moulin Rouge. We're definitely looking forward to seeing you all that. Thank you Thank for you. your time. You're welcome. Thank you.